This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right, question four of the uh, December 14 uh, paper F5 exam um, is about the balanced, book, uh, the balanced scorecard. So I hope you've got the question in front of you. And this I'm going to deal with slightly different than the others. The other questions involved um, calculations, as I've been working through. Here, uh, this is an entirely written question. There's no calculations involved at all, which I know as a result some people don't like. Uh, I'm going to have a chat through it, but because it's written, it's going to be a bit silly if I just write out a full answer on the screen. It'll be boring, um, it'll take ages, you'll fall asleep. And I mean, the examiner's answer um, is perfectly good. It's a good one to learn from, in fact. Uh, she's written it well. There's not that much to read. And for written questions, well, first of all, I appreciate the examiner always writes more than she expects because she knows people learn from it. Uh, but also, they are good ones to learn from because, despite what I just said, she writes less than, in, in, than is in study texts and so on. And the danger there, you know, you want 10 pages in a study text and you fall asleep. Um, she writes it quite neatly. Uh, and of course, what she writes is correct. Uh, we're not going to argue with it. And, um, certainly not until you've passed the exam. Um, so I'm not going to go through it in full and write it all out, as I said. But I want to make a few points clear. Look at the requirements. It says, A, describe each of the four perspectives of the balanced scorecard. Well, that is pure learning. That should be an easy six marks. The balanced scorecard is Kaplan and Norton. You don't need to use their names. But it's Kaplan and Norton. And they said when we're measuring performance uh, of a business, there are four areas that we should be looking at which they call perspectives. And you must learn them. You must. I mean, it really is easy marks. Um, she's listed them, but the four perspectives in any order. There's the financial perspective. Obviously, when you're measuring how well a business is doing, you want to look at things like profitability, clearly. But to uh, succeed in the long term, we should also be looking from the customer perspective. Are we keeping the customers happy? Are we delivering quality goods to them? Um, are we delivering on time? That sort of thing. So it's not a monetary issue. But in the long term, if we don't keep the customer happy by delivering on time, by delivering good quality and so on, then we'll lose business, we'll lose profits. Uh, internal perspective. We only keeping the customer happy, but we could be wasting money internally. You know, maybe I produce desks with very good quality control, so the customers always get a perfect desk. But maybe we're forever, as we're building them, forever damaging things and having to throw things away. It doesn't affect the customer, but it's wasteful internally. It's still costing us money. Or we're taking too long to produce things. Again, it's costing us money, even though the customer's not affected. Uh, and finally, the learning and growth perspective. But again, if we want to do well in the long term, we should end up always be looking for ways of improving things, of doing better. Now, I'm not going to say more there. I mean, it's yet another area where there's a lecture on the website you can look at, but you must learn those four. Uh, read what she's written. I said it's, it, it, it's a good way of uh, learning to read her answers. But bear in mind, she doesn't expect that much. One or two lines about each is all that's needed. You know, there's only six marks in total. Um, when it's written once, don't just write a great long essay, for heaven's sake, split them off. She wanted four, write financial, and then write a line explaining. 
customer underline right line. you know keep them separate leave a blank line between each don't just try and write one long essay the marker will fall asleep you know, the marker's marking thousands of these uh, and the danger is if you just string them all along uh, that they don't notice you're going to think your writing is beautiful i know but even though you can read your writing it may be difficult for the marker if your writing's bad, print, and in the very least, print the headings, the four perspectives. Let there be no argument that the, uh, the marker can't read what you've written. This was Kaplan Norton. Remember, the other one she could have asked, which is the same sort of thing, but it's more for uh, service businesses. It's Fitzgerald and Moon, who came up with um, six think on perspectives that were building blocks. Um, you know, it's very common that she asks about non-financial. It can be either of the two. Learn Catelyn Norton's four perspectives. Learn Fitzgerald and Moon's uh, six building blocks. Uh, part B of the question. Uh, for each perspective of the balance scorecard, I, for, each, so for each of those four, Identify one goal together with a company corresponding performance measure. The goals and measures should be specifically relevant to Jamer. For each pair of goals and measures, explain uh, why you've chosen them. So a few things here, and again, her answer is very good. And here, there is no one correct answer. There are quite a lot of uh, different goals and performance measures you could have come up with. Uh, she's listed quite a few, but if you thought of others, as long as they were sensible, you'd get the marks. But uh, the things I want to stress here, firstly, make sure you answered what she wanted. For each of those four perspectives, she wants you to identify a goal and a performance measure. One goal and one performance measure. I'll make sure you clear what we're talking about in a minute. So that's all. So don't go listing um, two, three, four. For each of those four, financial, customer, internal, learning. It's one goal, one performance measure. One goal, one, four, four, four. All right? But in addition, so there's quite a lot to do here for nine marks. For each pair of them, Explain why you've chosen them. So it was three things. For each of the four, it was three things. A goal, a performance measure, and why. And so keep it brief. Again, I mean, she's not actually written much, but it shouldn't take you long to read. Uh, but if you didn't do all each bit of that, because you're not read it properly, again, you're wasting marks. A goal, a performance measure, and why. Uh, finally, make sure you're clear not only what the four perspectives are, so they're enough there, you're going to read that yourself, but also what we mean by a goal and a performance measure. A goal is an overall aim. An overall aim. So a, a good one that she suggested, I'm cheating here, but a very good one she, she suggested for performance, uh, for financial performance. And I'm not going to read the whole thing to you because there were lots of clues in there. But financial performance, one thing she suggested as a goal is to increase the seat revenue per plane. It mentions somewhere about empty seats and things. If we increase the seat revenue per plane, that's good for financial. But it's just a general goal. Performance measure, we need a way of actually putting a number to it so that we can say, this year it's better than last year, this year it's worse than last year. And she suggested performance measure, the revenue per available passenger mile. Ooh. 
Lots of decisions you could have made. But the point I'm trying to get at, the goal is the overall aim. You know, in general, an overall aim, more profit, an overall aim, less cost uh, for customer, an overall aim, um, less faulty goods, and so on. So that's an aim, uh, the goal. The measure is trying to find a way of actually putting a number to it. Then we can compare and say you've done better or worse. So just one more to make sure you're clear what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, from the customer perspective, it does say sometime, oh, after that second paragraph down, it says the airline was given an on-time arrival ranking of seventh best, who rank all 50 of the country's airlines. Well, how are you sure you on that? What do you mean by on-time arrival? I mean, that's a customer perspective, that customers want to arrive on time. And fine, and if we want to improve customer satisfaction, that's perhaps something we should try and improve. It would be a goal, a goal to try and arrive on time. But it's fine having a goal, we need a way of measuring it. So I, I keep repeating, every year we can say, oh, it's improved or it's got worse. Well, she's given uh, as a measure the on-time arrival ranking from the Aviation Authority. Okay, it's something we can measure. This year we were seventh, next year we were sixth, something. Our alternative, which I think I'd have chosen and would have got me full marks, something like the percentage of plane of our planes that arrive on time. Or perhaps, and I'm going too deep here, perhaps the percentage that arrive within 15 minutes of on time. Anyway, but this is something we've got to figure to. Uh, and it's better, it's worse. So I'm not going to say more there. Do use her answer. Uh, it's a very good one to uh, learn from. Uh, she has written pretty well.